All right, well, welcome to today's uh, Art Storefront's Facebook Live, which we're, we're calling Website Audits in the COVID-19 world. Uh, I hope everyone is enjoying their uh, shelter in place slash quarantine uh, situation. Uh, Nick, how you doing? Want to introduce yourself? I'm doing great. Nick Friend, owner, CEO of Art Storefronts. And my name is Patrick Shanahan, and I run the marketing department at Art Storefronts. And as people are sort of getting on, um, uh, make sure we want to make sure that our audio is working and everything else. So if you could leave a comment and say, hey, my audio is working, that would be fantastic. Um, as we do these things, um, you know, one of the things that we do is we have our messenger bot stitched to the Facebook comments. If you're an Art Storefronts customer and you're in the Zoom call, um, we'll put the link in the chat notes. Uh, if you're on Facebook and you want to get the uh, the show notes for everything that we mentioned, we just kind of give you a URL, the chat bot will deliver it to you, and everything will be up to date and in sync. Uh, anything that we talk about, any websites that we tear down, um, all all of that stuff. So on that note, Nick, do you want to do sort of a, a, a quick intro and then uh, we can go in from there? Yeah, I just think that, you know, the way that you and I were thinking about this today is um, in the context of this pandemic and just everything going on, um, it is more crucial than ever that you have an online strategy, right? Like an online art marketing strategy. And so obviously if you, you know, if to have an online strategy, you got to have a place to drive traffic, to drive these people to, which is your online art gallery website, right? Now, if you're going to have an online art gallery website, it needs to be what we call a proper art gallery website. And that's not just like a fancy term. It's just, it, it basically just means that it needs to be, you know, there's uh, within the industry standards. Um, and we're going to get into that in the presentation. But I just think that this this topic is more relevant right now more than ever, obviously. But it it's it's relevant anyways. It, it's been relevant for the last five years, but it's extremely relevant right now. So what we want to do is just kind of focus on the website, uh, provide as much advice as possible, look for anything that people are doing wrong across the board and make sure that everybody's like, totally like positioned to capitalize on the online art market for the coming months and you know even years so um do you have anything that you want to comment on or should i get right into the presentation yeah i, I would just say big picture i've never seen anything like it because we have been flooded with you know just a deluge of people coming in and asking questions and saying can i get a website can i get signed up um you know I'd like to join all of my all of my offline opportunities have all been canceled all my retail opportunities have been canceled and i think you know independent of the website solution or you know it, it, i mean i guess what i'm trying to say is it is just a profundity and a profound learning of what the world that we're in right now and if it teaches us anything and you know this might come as a little weird it's you know like it, the majority of the people on this are customers we're not i'm not trying to frame it as like you know buy our website solution without your host any website solution if you were overly reliant on one source of revenue and all of a sudden it's gone my goodness what a lesson in diversification and diversity and having different lines in the water as you build your business and go on and it's you know it's terrifying in some ways. that's it's what what are what are reckoning that's the truth all your eggs in one basket and these people that are coming in i mean i've seen it particularly in uh, the chat bot they're like you know all of my revenue sources are done. My whole show circuit has been canceled. I have none of that on the table. What can I do? How can I start get selling? And I feel for my heart breaks because your online business is not like a light switch. You can just throw, you know, it's, it's a seed that you plant and it starts growing and then it gets better and better and better and better with time. And if you weren't working on it, if you weren't taking advantage of, of building it, getting it going, even if it was small, you've got nothing. You're starting from scratch. And this time, which is terrifying. So that's yeah, what I wanted to say, Nick. Why don't you go into your presentation? Yeah, and just to comment on that really quick, though, diversification is the key word, right? I mean, there was somebody who 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 contacted us and who was like, "I sell a hundred thousand dollars a year through like my art shows and things like that. What am I going to do? I don't. I've I've never had a website. I'm not even selling online. So it's like, well, you know, you gotta you gotta get started now. Um, but you know, the lesson is there for the long term. So let me go ahead and switch over here to. Uh, I'm going to click this screen share. Tell me if you're, tell me when you see my screen. Yep. You're good. Okay. Minimize that and go into the present. All right. So let's get started here. Hold on, hold on one sec, Nick. Some people are saying that the, the audio is out. Okay. Can everybody, can, can somebody wave their hand like Chris or somebody else? Are you hearing us inside the zoom call? 
Okay, Chris says yes, we're hearing, we're, you're hearing us there, just not on Facebook. I'll deal with the Facebook portion. You just keep going with the presentation. Okay. All right, so why a proper art gallery website is more crucial than ever right now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna provide some background. Um, some of you may already know this information, but we'll go through it pretty quickly. A proper art gallery website, the why. All right, so today, every serious photographer and artist should have their own art gallery. Th this is your own art gallery website, not somebody else's, okay? And it's with your own brand on your own domain name, like www. Uh, you know, josephsfineart.com, right? So what the point here is that in the past, it would be amazing to have your own physical retail art gallery space. That doesn't actually even make sense anymore on many levels. Um, but every serious photographer artist should have their own art gallery where people can buy from them 24 seven. You don't need middlemen anymore. You should be marketing directly to people, driving them to your art gallery website online and building your own lead and customer list. This is the key, your own lead customer list, not somebody else's because building and owning a lead and customer list is how you actually build a real business with consistent sales, you guys, in any industry. And so if you don't have consistent sales right now, or if your sales aren't growing, this is why it comes down to the quantity of leads that, uh, that you've acquired and your customer list. Most people have not been focusing on growing this and that's what causes their struggle over many years. So your own proper art gallery website, it's the most in important tool of your business. And I think you will see that after this presentation because it's where everyone will be going to conduct business with you. It's your brand and reputation, all right? And the pandemic that we're going through right now has only further emphasized all of this, but, but it's been true for years. It has been true. This is something that everybody should have been doing like five years ago, seven years ago, but right now it's all exacerbated. So a proper art gallery website, what does this actually mean, all right? So understand that selling anything online in any industry is all about reducing buyer friction, okay? So friction is when, you, if your visitors have lingering question that your website through its features doesn't help them answer, right? They get stuck and you will lose the sale. So in the, in the case of the art industry and examples of these would be, how will the size look on the wall that I plan to hang it? So many people take for granted that your typical consumer doesn't know what an 18 by 24 is right off the top of your head, right? So it's important for them to be able to visualize what that size actually is in order for them to check that box off mentally, so to speak, so that they can move uh, or proceed forward in the buying process. Will the art mesh well with my paint color? What exactly is a metal media type? I don't know what that is. I've never heard of it before. Can you show it to me? I need, I need to know what a frame will look like because I believe I will need one. So how does the art going to look framed? Even if I don't buy the frame from you, I know in this room, you know, we're going to have a black frame because everything else is black framed. So can you show me the piece with a black frame around it? That might make me more comfortable to buy it right now on the spot. Otherwise, I've got this tension, this friction there where I'm left like, I don't know if this is going to work or not. And so I'm not going to do anything right now. So when this happens, this friction happens, most people leave, right? Or they may just forget you and they end up bu buying from somebody else down the road who gave them the requisite experience. Notice the times this has happened to you in your own life, guys. That, and, and right now I want you to think about whether you were buying a mattress, whether you were buying, you know, whatever it is. Think about when you've been on a website or even in a retail store, when you've, you've been trying to make a buying decision, but you got stuck. There's, you, you know, you had some, concerns in your mind or you weren't quite sure and you just kind of don't pull the trigger. You don't buy. And it's not really a big deal. It's not something that you're like psychologically thinking of, but it happens. And then later on, maybe you go to a different store, somebody answers that question and you end up buying that thing on the spot. And so when you kind of like trace it back, you, you, you can see that the other place that you were previously at just kind of lost the sale because they just couldn't get you to the finish line. And that's how it goes. If you start noticing in your own life, this type of stuff happens all the time. So therefore, a proper art gallery website is one that is equipped with all the features necessary 
to eliminate art buyer friction. By definition, that's what a proper art gallery website is. And so it converts the absolute maximum number of visitors into buyers. So when you are doing marketing, when you are driving traffic to your site, you need to make the most of it. You want to convert the maximum amount into buyers, right? So this becomes incredibly important as your traffic grows into, you know, a uh, thousand, two thousand, three thousand visitors every single month. So we know that portfolio websites and generic websites don't work. Generic websites meaning, you know, the, the typical GoDaddy, Squarespace, whatever it is, like you can get a website anywhere. The generic website that people are using to set up a, you know, uh, a barbecue part, you know, company or whatever it is. Uh, th those websites are, are made for generic businesses and art it is not a generic sell, right? It's very intimate. It has a lot of different complications to it, a lot of questions and hurdles, a lot of potential friction, and you've got to have something that gets the deal done, right? So because these websites have so much friction, they have very low conversion rates, the opposite of what we just talked about with a proper art gallery website. And that makes it so much harder to grow sales. In other words, it's the wrong tool for the job at hand. Like, for example, you know, you wouldn't dig a, a swimming pool with a spoon, right? You would have a tractor. So there's a right tool for every job. Have the right tool for the job and you're gonna end up in a much better spot. And overall, your art gallery website communicates many things to first time visitors, all right? It communicates how successful you have been at selling art. Just the visual, the look, the experience will do all of this. Whether your prices are worth paying, whether your art will hold its value over time, whether you can be trusted with a big commercial order, like a hotel job or a interior design job, whether you really care about your customers and how they can expect to be treated if they do business with you. All of the above here is going to determine how much you sell every year, all right? And as I said at the beginning, proper, a proper art gallery website is not some fancy term, right? It just means that there's an industry standard for the minimum features you should have you either have them or you don't, okay? So uh, the big online art retailers who sell billions of dollars of art online annually figured this all out years ago. They built these features. At one point, they didn't have them. And you know it all kind of started in like 2005, 2006 with art.com. And over the years, they built all these things. They kept adding them like framing tools and wall vis visualizations and things like that. So it's all just common sense, right? If you do what they're doing and you follow what the industry standard is, you're going to be in a good spot. So learn from them. Don't do the opposite of what they are doing. So we're in the era of customer experience, you guys. Companies that provide the best customer experience are winning. These are trillion dollar companies. Amazon, Apple, I'm sure many of you love these companies, one or the other, right? Customer experience works. Amazon uses the phrase customer obsession. Right, It's on a big sign when every employee walks into any building at Amazon. They try to obsess about their customers. Customer obsession is what Jeff Bezos, the CEO and founder of Amazon, you know, has built the whole entire company around. Right, It's not just customer experience. It's obsessing about your customers. So if you're selling art as a business right, and you're taking it seriously, why would you not seek to give your customer the absolute best customer experience? right, to, to your art buyers. Why would you make it any harder on yourself than it needs to be? You wouldn't, right? It's the logical thing to do. This is your art gallery. Your art gallery website, it's your, it's your art gallery. This is or will be the centerpiece of your business, the one place to tell the world who you are. So treat it with the importance it deserves. And some of you might be thinking, well, it's not the centerpiece of my business. I've always sold through galleries or art shows. You should be utilizing the galleries and the art shows to be driving people back to your art gallery. That's the centerpiece, right? It is whether you have done it or not. It is and it should be the centerpiece of your business. All of those things are just spokes on your marketing wheel, but your hub is your art gallery website. That's where everyone's going to go long term over and over and over. Whether you met them once at a show, you're, you know, you're trying to get them to come back. And proper art gallery websites are the standard now, okay? Thousands of photographers and art artists already have them and for years. Art buyers notice, they know it. When they're landing on a website, if they're a high net worth individual, if they're anybody that you know has money to buy your art, 
they know what the right experience is or not. They've been to these websites before, right? So you're, if you don't have this, you're gonna stand out. So everyone that has it is in a much better footing. Once you have a proper art gallery website, then it's all about marketing from there, right? A website alone is not enough. You've gotta have the marketing, which means getting as many people as you can into your art gallery. And I think that's the beautiful thing is, once you've got a proper art gallery website, a lot of the little tinkering doesn't matter as much. What really matters is you're, to you're all properly set up. So you just got to fill the funnel. You just got to get, you got to do marketing and get more people to, into your art gallery. So from a look and feel standpoint, it should feel like you walked into a physical art gallery, right? What is it like when you walk into an art gallery? Typically there's white walls, right? They're not black. They're not, uh, you know, gray. Um, they're usually white or some form of white, maybe a light cream, but usually they're white, right? It's minimalist. It's a minimalist design. Your art is the design of your website. That is the key, right? So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do your best to stay out of the way and don't add design elements like other new colors, text, bolded fonts, huge logos that will compete with the art, right? So. You land on the website, it should be, the, the visitor should be taken right into, the, into your art, no different than the way that you walk into an art gallery and you're just, you're just confronted with you know, all the various pieces of art right there and you just walk wherever you wanna go to, right? There's nothing in the way, there's no big billboard in your way that's you know, a slideshow that's um, telling you like, no, 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 don't go into my art gallery, I want you to watch this first. No, 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 they want you right into the art and you wanna have the same uh, mindset. So there are many important elements like size and media type options on a, for a website, trust badges, et cetera. This will, be all, uh, this will all be easier to understand if we actually show it to you. So let's audit some websites. All right, so I'm gonna switch over here. What I wanna do first is show you guys uh, a website um, that I believe is doing a good job. Hang on one second. A really good job and that is one of our fave art storefronts members Kimberly Camerata um, I love Kimberly's site I think the design is it, she did a great job um, her logo not too big not too overwhelming if you notice it's all very minimalist she didn't add a whole bunch of stuff to it so when you when you load the page right here you're immediately taken right into the images and you're you know you're encouraged to start scrolling and within seconds You've got that art gallery experience. You're seeing, you know, all of these different categories of her art, but you're actually seeing the art. Okay. So as I go further, um, if I click into a product, I'm taken to a product buying page, and this is the most important page, right? You'll notice that she's selling, she has the ability to sell her art prints and her original painting on here side by side, because you shouldn't make the user have to click from one to the other. They should be allowed to buy the, the open edition, the limited edition, the original painting, or if you have um, something like triptychs, we call it polyptic art. Um, you should have all of that on one spot, on one uh, area here, so that uh, the, the visitor doesn't have to click and reload all of these different pages to get there because they're really not going to do that. And that's the key less text, less clicks. You know, Saving any time for the user is a huge benefit for them and it's gonna make their experience that much better. So as I scroll down here though, you can see there's the different media types. You can click on the different uh, options here and uh, see like a 3D preview. Um, this is all very important because it helps the user visualize what it's gonna be like. Like for example, if you go to a canvas, you've got the canvas wrap, all right? And then they can choose a style uh, or a size um, Kimberly's done a great job here. I think she has, you know, it's good to have maybe eight to 12 sizes, not too many, because that can just be totally overwhelming. Your sizes should range from low to high, like your smallest to the very highest. And then you should just kind of proportionately offer some of the sizes in between so that it fits, you know, the entire gamut. The styles are just, you know, what you would imagine. They could pick a border color for a canvas, um, whether it's a gallery wrap or a, a framed piece and they can toggle through different frames as we, as we mentioned. I wanna go back to media types first though here. The thing I love about what Kimberly did is she's got all the different options that, that I might recommend and even a couple more. So I think that was her preference, but typically 
You want to have one fine art paper, either a smooth or a watercolor paper. You want to have a canvas. You want to have a metal. You want to have wood and you want to have acrylic. You can optionally have a photo paper, whether that's glossy, semi-gloss, metallic, uh, a luster. Um, and, and that will, uh, that'll probably be your lowest price point item. And so that's why I say optionally, if you don't want to have a real low price point, then don't have the photo paper, just have the fine art paper. Um, but in her case, she's chosen to have two different options for acrylic and two different fine art papers. I don't have a problem with that. It's all personal preference. But what I want to make sure is that you have one of each of those. And let me, let me tell you why. The reason being is because an example is like, if you only offer photo paper and I love your art, for example, or a fine art paper, and I love your art. My entire house only has uh, canvas wraps and original paintings. That's it. It's all like gallery wrapped canvas, so to speak. So if I like your art and you don't offer canvas, I literally can't buy from you, right? Same thing goes for a hotel that has an entire job that's on metal or it's on wood or it's acrylic. I see these happen all the time. If you don't offer the main media types, then all you're doing is closing your opportunities you're limiting your opportunities and that's just going to make you, you sell more. A lot of people might be coming across your site, especially when you're doing marketing, they're coming into your gallery and they don't know whether you have those options. And so you might have an interior designer that came to your website today and it's like, I'm looking for somebody that has acrylic art, right? That's what this hotel is going to have. And so they go to your site, they see you don't have it and they're gone. So that's why you want to make sure that you're offering, you know, the, the, the typical media types that are popular today and that might apply towards any type of home, office, or job. So I love what she has here. So if you go down below, you can see there's a live preview augmented reality. It allows you to try the art on your wall. Patrick is gonna go ahead and demo that after the fact, because this is huge, right? Um, it allows the person to actually use their own phone on the spot without downloading anything and try the art literally on the wall that they plan to hang the piece. Now there's nothing more emotional than like seeing the art in your own house. So this is obviously a very powerful thing. There's a wall preview tool here, which allows the, the, the user. So if they're, if they're on a desktop or if they are not in the room, this is extremely important so that they can actually get like a, I think it's really important for the size visualization. So you can see you've got like a seven foot, you've got an example of a living room, like a couch. You can do a bedroom, you can do a nursery. You know, you can do a reception lobby, you can do a restaurant, but they get an idea of what it would look like. So like, you know, running with the hotel concept, let's say it was an interior designer for a hotel and they're like, okay, yeah, you know, you want a big piece like right behind that lobby, like check-in area. Okay, the 60 by 48 looks like the right one, right? And we can check our wall, wall color. I think our wall color is somewhat like this, um, or maybe we're, we're still in the design phase and we're thinking about doing something like that, right? So you can see that it allows them to get so much further down the sales funnel by going, wow, we kind of, we know generally what size we wanna have and it's gonna work with a paint color. I think that this is gonna actually work, right? And so they're that much closer to actually going and adding the item to their cart and, uh, and completing the checkout process. So I think some other things on here that are very important um, as I'm starting to check out whether I'm going to buy from this person, I start looking around like, can I trust this person? You'll notice that Kimberly has all of these trust badges down here that look really legit, right? So trusted art seller, this presence of this badge signifies that this business has officially registered with the art storefronts organization and has an established track record of selling art. It also means that buyers can trust that they are buying from a legitimate business. In other words, there is a third party trust layer that art storefronts um, is providing for her so that somebody can complain if they get ripped off. She's got a verified returns and exchange policy, which makes you a lot more comfortable buying something. She has a secure website, just making that very clear. And she is uh, making it loud and clear that the, um, the materials that she is using to create her product are uh, archival, right? They're fine arts, they're going to last they're going to retain their value, okay? So these are the main points right here. And um, I think that at this point, what I would wanna do is, uh, uh, Patrick, are you there? And I can kick it back and stop the screen share. Yeah. So what are your thoughts so far? 
Well, that's because it's because we're fresh. Let's just go to the. So I'll have to share because yeah. We're sure. Go ahead and go do the augmented reality. Yeah. Let's hope this works. You never know in these situations. All right. So can you see this? Can you see the phone? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to go ahead and go live preview with AR. I'll say, okay. So there's a wall. So you're doing this on the phone on your phone right now in your house. that kind of give you the yeah and you can change the size exactly yeah you change the size you can move it around with your finger too yeah i mean i'm kind of tethered here where i am so yeah 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 well i think that's good enough you get the gist yeah so they can do that on the fly without having to download anything and then check out so overall though overall that's a proper art gallery website kimberly's doing a really good job kimberly you have nothing to change um it's perfect uh i think a lot of people even art storefronts members um, can learn a lot from that, you know, um, cause I do see a lot of people with like massive logos and, or they add some text somewhere and it's got, it's in like blue, you know, and it's, it's starting to compete with the art. Um, and it's easy to do that. So I think at this point it would be a good idea to, uh, we can either start, we can start doing some audits who wants their website audit. Yeah, we've got, we've got an existing list. Here you go. One thing I would say is I've bribed my children with the candy. No judging, no judging, okay? This is, this is crisis mode over here. Um, one thing I would say is that like, you know, we get a lot of comments from a lot of artists, um, photographers too, that are coming in and saying, you know, can I change this or can I change that? Or can I get some custom design done here? Or can I move some things around? And I understand that tendency better than anyone because my whole website building career, I've been in that mode. Like if I can just get this dialed or if I can just get that dialed uh, or, you know, if I can just get this layout done and a couple, two, three weeks go by and then a couple more, two, three weeks go by and then a month and a half has gone by and then two months has gone by and you're still monkeying around with the website and it's not live and you're not working on driving traffic and you're not getting people there. And it is a killer. It is a momentum killer. The websites, the way that we have them outlined are literally white minimalist the only thing that matters is the art and can it can it effectively transact commerce if it can you do not have a website problem if your website can show the media type options can take a credit card can ship it you do not have a website problem you have an absolute uh, uh, get attention get eyeballs drive traffic and that will fix it so and that's kind of the point right have a proper art gallery website so you don't have to worry about it like it's all taken care of for you, right? Like it converts, it converts better than anything. And then spend a hundred percent of your time on your business that you're not creating on marketing, filling in the funnel with more leads and more customers, because that's the only thing that's going to change the business. The marginal return on investment on your time for tinkering with the website is not going to get you anything. And I, it, a, 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 a specific example I will have for this is for anyone who wants to take the time to like, they look at the room previews on the wall preview tool and they're like, I want to have my own in there. I have my own opinion of what those should be. It's like, if I could, I wish I could just tell those people, just don't do it. It's just, you're not like, you, you may actually hurt your performance. You may improve it, but the, the marginal improvement will be so small and you don't, you're not scientifically measuring it anyway, so it doesn't matter. And that time and energy just needs to be focused on marketing. Because if I ever look at anybody's stats, they don't have enough traffic. If you don't have, if you don't have a thousand visits a month on your site yet, then you do should not be spending any, any extra time on your site. You should go with the best practices that we are recommending and you should immediately be moving to marketing and do not worry because you don't have a conversion problem. The sites work. They convert very high. We know that because we have very high traffic sites all over and everybody's using the exact same technology and the conversion rates are there and they're better. When people are on other platforms and they move over to art storefronts, their conversion rates go up. Yep, are, we, uh, are you ready to get into some audits? Yes, I am. Okay, let me, uh, let me get this all dialed in. And- Oh, oh Lucy, Lucy's got one in here, um, Sandra in the uh, Zoom. Mm -hmm. Do you wanna do it on your side? Okay. All right, so this is, I think, Zan's site, right? Um, 
I've got I've got a Google Doc that I'm that I'm working off of. We're gonna we're gonna go through these things uh, relatively quickly, um, and and we'll just kind of cycle through all of them and, and and tear them down real time. So let's start with this one, Nick. What do you got? So where's the logo? Is there not one? There's not one. Okay, so that's the first problem. That's that's probably obvious to Zan. Um, yeah, so you got to have the logo. Have it tasteful. Have it like nice and small. Don't make it huge. Um, I like what I see. Otherwise, very clean, very minimalistic. She hasn't like added a bunch of colors or anything. Let's go ahead and click through to get to a product page. You can go through the best sellers right there. One sec, I got to bail this again. All right, that should do it. Oh, can you scroll down too? So she's got the augmented reality badge down there, which is nice. She's got the trust badges. Perfect. Love it. What did you want to see next? Um, just click through on the best sellers. And then, and then click on one of the pieces because I want to look at one of the uh, product pages. Any piece will do. Let's look at the media types. Oh, perfect, Zan. I love it. That's, that is, if it were me, that's what I would do. I would have these five media types. Um, I might have a textured fine art paper if that suits my work a little bit better. If I was a photographer, smooth is pretty awesome. But five media types, hitting them all, um, this is perfect. Let's look at the sizes on hers. Great. Zan, you're good to go. I have, no, I have no changes on here. I love it. Just get that logo up there. Get a professional logo. The other thing too, I noticed that the navigation is going on your upload to print to a second line. Don't do that. Have only one line of navigation. You can, you'll have to think about how you can organ, like have like a, a broader category of organization. Um, probably the blog does not need to be on there. Yeah, the upload to print should be on the main line. Um, you got shop apparel, gift cards. The blog does not need to be on there. You could probably do like, um, you know, uh, about me or something like that. And then underneath that might have like your bio, your blog, and, and then you just saved yourself one spot in the navigation. I don't think the client reviews needs to be up there either. That could be something in your footer. Um, so anyways, that's my thought. One of Zan's big questions is then, then why aren't I selling? Uh, traffic. Traffic. Marketing, we'd have to look at that. We'd have to dig in and look at your traffic. It's all that. It's not, yeah, that's all it is. It's all marketing. Yeah, and we can we can definitely do that, but we're going to stick to website teardowns on this one. So if you want us to look at your stats in depth. On the yeah, Zan, we have a, we've got a, um, a workshop on Tuesday. I know that um, the support team uh, has, has said that it's going to be the, the second workshop for um, people that are not selling or haven't sold yet in their business. Um, so that's this upcoming Tuesday at 2.30 Central, right, for Art Storefronts members. So I definitely want you there. Let's look at what you're doing. Let's talk about it. And let's help you uh, move forward. Um, Rick brought up, you said, you know, I find the thing sample um, distracting. This is a watermark here. You can elect, I, I believe, Nick, yes. you can elect to turn it on or not, right? Yep. You just turn that on or off. You can upload your own so it's your logo. It's totally optional. In fact, almost everything on here is optional. Yeah, so total personal preference there. Yeah. Yeah, let's get to the next one. Are you seeing this one, Nick? Yeah, so I'm finding the logo a little questionable. Um, it just looks like it's text and it's going on to two lines. I, I think it could be better. You could... Um, you could really uh, spice that up. I also think that I'm looking at a theme 1.0 version here. We're on theme 2.0. We're about to release theme 3.0. So Joan, you've probably been a customer for a long time. Um, I, would, I would immediately move to theme 2.0. Uh, theme 3.0 is coming out soon. I actually have a little preview. I'm going to show you guys in a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, I would do that. That's going to widen up your whole, you, the, the, the amount of space that you have here, which will s potentially solve your navigation problem. You've got two lines of navigation. So try to make that one exactly as I was recommending. But I would go to Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. You can get a professional logo for very cheap. Um, 
The quality of it will depend on how much you want to spend. But to have a professional business, I mean, you could literally spend five or ten dollars and actually have a pretty decent logo that'll get the job done. If you want to spend a little more, you can get somebody who's even better. But yeah, as you can see here, here's the site. Um, awesome website. Um, it you know to buy like graphic design types of services and things like that. So that's what I would do, and it'll change uh, change the look. So let's go back to the site real quick. That's Zans. Let's go to Jones. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would probably look at the sleek theme. I'm not a huge fan of that theme that has that big, you know, overarching gray border. Um, I don't even think that exists in theme 2.0. Um, so yeah, uh, scroll down a little bit. Pat? Hey, Nick, yeah, why don't you take the share for a sec? I got to go. Okay. Okay, Pat's got family needs taken over. So I will take this opportunity to show you guys um, the new design if you haven't seen it. Um, so this is an example of what theme 3.0 is going to be. It'll have some other design elements as well. But uh, are you guys able to see my screen? Chris, I'm unmuting you so you can kind of tell me. Are you guys able to see my screen? It's not there anymore, but it, well, yeah, there we go. It's there. Okay, great. I don't think it's showing up on uh, what Patrick has going over there. That's okay. Um, so you can see that one of the key things, there's a couple of key things that we've done here. First of all, we've made the design even more minimalistic. <coughs> Excuse me. So we've removed a lot of design elements to make it just cleaner, um, and less distracting so that, you know, the art really stands out. Um, you also will notice that, uh, um, we have moved the visualization tools underneath the image so that they can do the augmented reality or the wall preview, um, right on the spot underneath the image. And I think that that's a more, that's a more appropriate location. So it's a good, nice design upgrade here. Um, and we think that, uh, we're going to be releasing this probably in the next th two to three weeks. Um, it'll be available to everybody on any plan. It doesn't matter. Um, and uh, we think that it's going to increase the conversion rates even more. And we will be studying that scientifically and watching that. So uh, if you want to try it out when it comes out, you can definitely do that. And we will announce that when the time comes. So let me go back to. Uh, the Zoom. Um, Chris, do you have another website that I could tear down or audit? I don't um, need to use that. I could do Sandra right here. She's been waiting yeah, patiently. I see there's, yeah, there's a couple in the comments. I'll can you pull up another list? Can you see my screen? Not anymore. Yeah, it's gone again. Oh, okay. Yep, there we go. Okay. Yeah, so right off the bat, I really like this. Um, you know, uh, clean logo in the corner. Um, a lot of text right here, but at least she didn't. Uh, you know, you might you might make this a little bit more concise, and then you can add more. Oh, you you do have some some down here, but you might I I might copy and paste or cut and paste some of this down to the very bottom. That might not be as um, relevant, but I can see that what she's doing here is she's doing English. And then she's doing French just to be totally safe. Uh, but yeah, at least she didn't change the color of this text. It's still fitting into the design. So I'm, I'm okay with it. I see the trust badges down here, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and click through. Um, I like the price points. Yeah, so I see... Canvas, acrylic, metal, fine art paper, photo paper, and wall peels. I mean, she's covering the gamut and she's choosing to offer these wall sticker type of things. So I think a really good media type selection, not overwhelming at all. Sizes, once again, really good. I like what I see. Um, yeah, all good here. Sandra, I wouldn't change anything. I think you just focus on marketing and traffic. You're good to go. All right, Chris, I'm coming back in here. Let's do Jackie Robinson or Robbins Studio. 
We have a we have a Google Doc link too. Uh, do you want me to send it to you in Slack? Patrick have like a whole list on. There. Uh, if you could do it, if you could do it right in the Zoom chat, that'll be easier oh, yeah, for me. Yeah, here me pop it in. And Patrick, when you're back, or if he gets comes back, just let me know so I can include him on this. This looks pretty good here. I'm I'm a little. I think this font is a little small here. There's a lot I of. See, I don't see your screen. Oh, you yet. don't see it? I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. I'm having to switch back and forth. Okay, there we go. Okay, so thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, so right here, like this font seems abnormally small. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good idea with the user experience. Um, you got two FAQ pages. I would consolidate those into one. Um, there's a lot of space right here, wasted space. I don't, you know, I'd probably move this up um, using the theme editor. So you've got something that you're, you're putting right in front of everybody, um, which is an interesting decision. I'm gonna click this. Okay, so it's taking me down, that's okay. I just don't know that this is worth doing. Like, you know, you're just plopping this in front of everybody as like a big wall right in front of them, kind of stopping them in their tracks as opposed to just taking them right into the art. Um, I also find it interesting that this thing that you're promoting right here is not visible here. So you got photo gallery one, you got best sellers, photo gallery two. Your best seller should be the first category always. Um, and if, if this is not the best seller, then, you know, I mean, it should be the first image on here. If this is, you know, if this is deserves this much attention. So yeah, I might potentially adjust that. I would move the best sellers over. I'd potentially ditch this whole top thing. I don't think it's necessary. It's just getting in the way of people seeing the art. Um, yeah, uh, you are choosing to not have a couple. Stay on that tab, Stay on that tab for a second and do, do something for me. Sure. Just open, open a new tab in Google Heat Maps because I want to talk about, I think a lot of people get mixed up on why we're advocating for a grid of images on a homepage. So if you just, just open a new tab and just Google heat map and then you, I'll, I'll be able to explain exactly what it is. So what heat map technology is, is that you can run this on websites and people are vaguely familiar with what it is, but just go to images, any image, we'll show it. So you see it, these, these heat maps sort of record where people are on your site and where their eyes are focused, what they're looking at, right? So if we go back, if we go back to the site that we were just looking at a second ago, scroll down. The reason that we don't advocate these enter buttons or slideshows or a slider up here in the slightest is when you have a gallery of images down below here um, and you look at the heat maps, you'll notice that people's eyes wander all around and they're totally enraptured and they're looking at everything and then they end up going down a path. And what we found is almost, almost to a website is that when you have a big grid of images like this, your bounce rate goes down. Bounce rate is is kind of be thought of as like somebody walks by your store and you know they they have an opportunity to walk into the store or they just keep walking. If they if they keep walking, they bounce right. And so for 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 whatever reason, science, psychology, whatever, when you have the grid of images, we see a significantly lower bounce rate time and time again. So unless you have something massive to promote, like let's just say this dinosaur, my kids love dinosaurs. By the way, it's dinosaurs all day over here right now. Unless you're, and this is a gallery show that you're promoting or a huge event or something massive going on, get it out of there and just keep the grid of images. And you're gonna end up having a lower bounce rate and people are gonna go deeper into your site, have more page views, more, more visits. But one of the things too, Nick, that we haven't looked at is we haven't looked at any about, about us pages. So let's, let's, let's get into Jackie's about the artist. Okay. The other thing I wanna say really quick on that though too, is that some people might ask like, why do we have this? Why do we even have this feature? If we, we don't want people to use it, well, we do it because some people insist, but that's, the, we do some things because some people insist they just have to have it and they think it's going to work for them. And so some of those features are there, but it doesn't mean that we advocate using them. Okay. So I'm clicking on about the artist. So he's got another thing here. He's added one here. Um, and, or she, Jackie, sorry, Jackie. Um, yeah. So you got a good picture there. Pat, do you have any comments on this? Perfect timing. I just came back in. Yeah, and this is this is a big one too. And look, I am the most guilty human being you'll ever know on this normally. Okay, if you look at my Facebook page, we were friends. I have about three photos on there. If you look at my Instagram page, I have three photos. I hate photos. I hate being the brand. 
I, I hate it. I can't stand it. I don't want to be on video. I don't like doing these webinars. I don't want anyone to see me. I want to hide in my house and be secure. Okay. Especially, especially, you know, during quarantine, during quarantine. but you guys are the brand in today's day and age. Every artist is a solo entrepreneur and for the most part, and you guys are the brand. And so if you don't have a photo of you and I can't see your face, look in your eyes and start, start building an emotional connection. Um, you're, you're lost. You, you cannot have an about me page that just says, you know, Jackie loves painting. She started painting when she was six. She's really good at it. And that's it. No photos of you. I mean, the more photos of you, the more you're willing to reveal and, and develop an emotional connection. Maybe Jackie likes dogs. If she, if she likes dogs and she had a picture of her and a dog and I like golden retrievers and she likes golden retrievers, the next thing you know, I'm bonded. I'm bonded, right? So this is a huge, a huge area. And this is, doesn't matter where you have your website. The about you section should tell a story and should show some photos, video even better. Yeah, I think I think she did a good job here. I mean, I'm, I read this. I think it's a great description, Jackie. Um, good picture. I like it. I think it gets the job done for sure. Um, should we go to an FAQ? I think this is actually a really good uh, example. Um, so, what is your shipping policy? You know, for prints, she's got all this great information. A table here about the production time, standard shipping, two day, next day. Um, business days are Monday through Friday. How much does the shipping cost for originals and limited editions? It's got all these different things. When will I receive my order? Can I ship to Canada? What is your policy on returns, exchanges, refunds? Can I cancel my order? This is phenomenal. And I know that we provide a lot of this information by default with the uh, vendors. Um, she might've added some different stuff in Oh, you got to Jackie, make sure that you, yeah, you change this default here. You've got, um, you know, a couple of default uh, emails here, but this information is phenomenal. I mean, here's something that I, that just strikes me when you have a really good FAQ page that talks about stuff like this, it shows that this is an example of like what a real business website looks like, right? It's, it makes it look like Jackie is actually selling a lot of prints and, and doing a lot of business. And if I were like an interior designer or, you know, a hospitality type of uh, job, um, or I had a hospitality job, I would, I would be looking at this going, okay, like she's clearly done business. Um, and, uh, you know, I might contact her if I like my art to potentially, or if I like her art to potentially do something together. All right. So should we go to the next one? Yeah, I've got, I, I, I kind of want to jump in the queue here real quickly, because I think this is another illustrative point I want to make. Uh, Nick, the URL, can you pull it up and do it on your screen is water, P L U S Inc.com. And this is Kim. And the reason I want you to pull her up is it, it sounds like she literally just launched, um, you know, a, a couple of days ago. And these, these are my all time favorites to look at um, because is that, is that correct? Yep. That's the correct site. Oh, so you, you literally have just launched. You're, you're not even moved over yet. This is on someone else's platform, right? Yep. Has to be. Yeah. Okay. So you're not there yet. So it's, it makes no sense to turn down a website that's not up yet. I thought it was going to be just launched, like literally just, just, just going, uh, which are my favorite ones to, 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 to tear down. Okay. So should we, let's pick it. Do you want to take the screen share back? No, I need you to hold it for a few moments. Okay. All right. So let's keep going down here. I'm going to, I'm going to take the opportunity. So I don't have to go back and forth to click a bunch of these so that they're open. Uh, what was that? Uh, click on that. Okay. Oh, and here's the document that Chris was talking about that had more. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, if I see some that I'm going to, I'm going to start going through these faster because some of these are looking very similar, a lot of similar advice like this one right here. Um, we did it. What I want to mention on this, Patrick mentioned the bounce rate with these types of big things, big slideshows in the way we did a case study on this. You got to get your screen up too if you're sharing it. So we did a case study on this. Can you see it now? Yeah, you're good. Okay. So, so we saw that, you know, there was a, there was a, there was a painter on our platform that was selling a lot and had a lot of traffic. So it gave us the opportunity to run a really good case study. It's on our blog, it, we, the, the case study, all the details and everything. But by simply removing this, uh, uh, like slideshow, um, and hers was actually like a slideshow. It had a bunch of images in it. Um, we reduced her bounce rate by 400%, which is extremely good. 
That's an extremely good thing. So if you strongly believe in having one of these, I highly recommend seeing that. And in fact, Taylor, let's make sure that that's in our show notes. Um, and so, so that people can see that, but this one has a similar logo problem, way too big. This thing should be like a third of the size or half the size at least, because look what it's doing. It's, it's just adding all this extra space, which is pushing down all of this. Um, and this is where we want to get, this is where all the action is. This is what's going to make you money. Raymond, there's a problem with your domain. Talk to our support team and make sure that you get that fixed. I can tell right here. So it's fine. What, which the problem here is that the www is pointed correctly. The non www, which is called a naked domain is, is pulling up that, um, that not secure right here. So it just means that you haven't pointed it directly. Don't worry about it. Our support team can help you with that and get that done for you. Um, Raymond's chosen to have a gray background. It looks like I'm not a big fan of that. I don't walk into a lot. The reason is because I don't walk into a lot of homes um, that have a gray background, right? So if you're going to choose a background color, have it be a popular color that people are going to be, you know, hanging the art on, right? Because you don't want to make it any harder for them to visualize what the art will be on their wall. So keep it simple. Some of this stuff here is like it's shop art, shop original art, shop digital art prints. There's just too much shop on here. Um, you might have shop art and then when they hover over that, maybe have originals and digital art prints. I don't really get this. This is just, I think it's, you might have, you, you could probably uh, clean this up a little bit. The language is kind of confusing. So if I hover over this, you got shop orig original, there's a spelling error, original drawings, original paintings. You'll want to fix that. Yeah, I, I, would, I would definitely do something with that. Let's go to the next. We did that. Okay, let's go to Deborah. A lot of the same things here. Um, she's got a big one here. I like that it scrolls down, but wow, beautiful stuff. I would love to see these higher. I would, I'd probably ditch this thing as I was saying, because as soon as I saw this stuff, everything just came came together. I love it. Um, you've got the, I noticed right here, you've got the, the, the two, two levels of navigation again. Um, fine art prints, art in situ. I don't think people know what in situ means as much as artists think they do. Um, I don't love that, but I'm okay with it. I would probably put fine art prints. If you're going to have the upload to print and you got art jewelry, I would move those over and get the gift cards, probably take the art in situ and move it over here just because like everything you're selling, like your products should be like probably the furthest to the left. And then everything else that's kind of like secondary should probably be on the right. Really good stuff here. I, I'm, I'm really happy with this. I love that you have all the images on one page um, on your homepage because that's something we recommend if you have less than a hundred images, don't have a bunch of categories like bestsellers and things like that you don't have enough images and you're making people click too much that can really hurt the performance of your site. So if you have less than a hundred, put all the images on the homepage. That way somebody lands on the page, whether they're on a phone or on a desktop, they scroll down, they see your entire collection in 15 seconds. So you, you're giving yourself the best opportunity. You're making the visitor work the least amount possible to see your art and give yourself the best chance at getting them to go through and make a purchase. Matt Pearson. Okay, here's a way too big of a logo. Um, way, 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 way too big. Like this is where, when I land on the site, my eye goes right to that logo. Like I just, it's just taking over everything. What you and want- I, and, I, and I do like it. It's a cool looking logo, but it's too big. It's just too big. People don't, you have to remember guys, when I'm clicking around, Every single page that I load, that thing is going to be there taking over the half the screen practically, or like, you know, I'm on a Mac, I'm on a MacBook pro laptop here with the biggest screen that they offer. And it's taking like a third of my browser screen here, or maybe more. It's like 40% before I even get to your art. If it was smaller, let's say it like, it was only going about like down to here, we'd have all this extra real estate. And what would happen is 
I would see this, you know, I would see not only your first row of images, but I'd see part of, you know, half of the other ones, which tells me that I should scroll down to look at more. So that's my big takeaway there. Show me the uh, doubt us on that one. Now I want to see it. Kind of cool how Google Docs does those little previews. Never seen that before. It's new. Oh, this is good. He's got the baby there. Yeah, love it. Yeah, not bad. I would, I would add, um, I would take a look at the. I know we've got a new template for an about page. It is. Uh, I'll just show you real quick if I go to like just an example site. So you guys can see, um, just go to add page. We've got these ASF templates so that you, you know, you don't have to do any of the work. This would be the about the artist. Um, it's probably the latest version that you want. And it will be kind of like, um, the one that we were just showing earlier where you actually have like, you know, a, a language about the art storefronts organization as a third party, um, you know, verification and the trusted art seller badge. It might just make it a little bit nicer. Not a big deal, though. That's just a small thing. All this looks good, though. Got a got a quick Facebook question, Nick. Why do some have four uh, four badges and some two? Is that a is that's that, a, that, that a that's a choice by the artist? They're choosing to either activate the other two or not. Um, I would not. I would recommend activating all of them, um, in, unless unless like the verified archival material badge. Like, let's say you're selling like like lower price decorative art and you're not using like the highest end stuff and that's just, you know, what your brand is doing, then you might not need that one, but otherwise you should have the other ones. Okay. Ron Olcott, this is just like gorgeous right here. What I would do though, Ron, is I would use the theme editor and, and move this up. You can do it with negative margin. So that way it's just like right perfectly centered on this, I would look for a way again to have single, single line navigation. Um, that'll move everything up. Uh, and you know, you'll get more, get more real estate back. Other than that, I kind of like what I see here. I'm going to just click in just to see how many images you've got here. Yeah. I'm Ron, Ron the only thing I would say, um, and this may not apply to you, but I don't have time to click on every single one of these, but whenever I see like, you know, about six to nine categories, just see if you have roughly under a hundred images. It's not like a, a hard, fast rule. I mean, if you have like 105, if it were me, I would probably go with not having categories and just go on the single page. You can have the categories in here, right? So it's easy to like find stuff if people want it. But, um, but on your homepage, if you can get away with having all the images on one page, it might get better performance just because the just think about it. The user experience is just incredible. Like they can see everything in seconds without clicking. Otherwise, I got to click on nine different pages to see any of the images on these. People are not going to do that. They're not, they, they're not going to have that much um, time on their hands or patience. So that, may, that might be something to think about. No need for the privacy policy in the header either. At all. Yeah, no need for that. Or the shipping and returns. You don't need to put that in their mind. That that's a perfect thing for the footer. You've you've got it here already too. Cool. On to the next. We got Beck. Ooh, Beck. Okay, lead capture tool. Follow the best practices. Do that right away, please. Very, very, very important for capturing leads. I think her issue is with the originals and not wanting to discount the originals, which is why she did that. But yeah. There should be some, there should be at least some sort of an incentive to join the list though, you know? One way or the other. Um, always. Always, yeah. I'm not a personal, personally a great fan of this centered logo. Um, on art gallery websites. And the reason why, I know a lot of people like it. Um, it does look kind of nice right now, but uh, the reason I don't like it is because it takes up a lot of real estate. There's this principle called 
above the fold that's been like an advertising principle for years. I want you guys to visualize like a newspaper, right? Folded in half on the on like the old like newsstands, right? The what to be above the fold, it means that you're on the front of the newspaper, the one that every the part that everybody sees when they're walking by. To be below the fold is the other side. And there's some sort of a stat, you could probably look it up on Google where, you know, if you're if 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 your content is or your advertisement is above the fold, then it's going to almost get like a hundred percent like readership or viewership, right? But if it's below the fold, it literally drops by fifty percent. It's huge. So the equivalent of that, when you're looking at an art website, is when I go to your homepage and I land on the page and I do not scroll, what I'm looking at is the above the fold content. So every bit of real estate that you have here is very important, right? So I probably wouldn't have your image right here. I would let that just be on your about page. Um, so that way, you know, people can get right into your content, um, which is gorgeous. And you notice above the fold, I don't even see your content. I don't even get to see your art yet. So I want to make sure that at least I'm seeing the first row of your art above the fold. Let's take a look at some of this stuff here. Unique designs. So she's only got one. So this may be another situation where there's not enough to warrant having all of these in categories on the homepage. Definitely have them in categories, you know, here, um, which you do. Yeah, I'm not seeing enough. So these might, Beck, you might be a good candidate for that as well. Something to think about. Let's take a look at this one here. So you've got the prints. Um, yeah, you're not offering you're you're not you're you're not offering a fine art paper. That's that's your choice. You might want to consider that you're not offering uh, wood, but you've got metal, you've got acrylic. That's fine with me. Um, everything else looks pretty good here. Maybe look at those four badges. I'm not sure why people are not activating all four. That's interesting. Cool. All right, Joy. Another example of a massive logo. I'm just going to show you guys. I, I have to do this. I'm going to have to do this on the spot. Um, actually, it doesn't look like I can with the screen share. I was going to show you guys me just shrinking this logo on the fly and moving it up. But Joy, shrink this, shrink this logo. Move it up to be right here so it's in line with your navigation. All of this stuff will move up. It'll be a much better experience. Again, you've only got four categories. You may be a candidate to just have everything on the homepage. Cool, you got the print giveaway page. You're using the default that we gave you. I like it. All right, let's go to the next one. Did we do Lucy already? Thought that we did. No, we didn't. Yeah, beautiful logo right here. Again, I would, I don't know if, if um, this is not, it looks like it's, you've got some space underneath it. Um, but again, yeah, move it to be in line with your navigation using the theme editor and try to get one line of nav navigation. Some of the other principles I already talked about apply here too. Only three categories. Maybe you only need to put everything right on the homepage. Do we have any other questions, Pat, while I'm going through these? Uh, we, can, we can zip over to them and get into a bunch of them, um, but just keep rolling for now. You're doing good. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we're seeing a pattern here. I don't know if um, any, anybody else has anything else specific to ask. I think we might want to move to that because I think, you know, um, these are getting a little bit redundant. At, like the, the advice, this is, a, this is a perfect lead capture tool. This is an example of a best practices lead capture tool. So I love it, right? Save 20% on your first order. Um, this is what gets people to, this is what gets buyers who are on your site to actually go, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna sign up for your list. Thank you, Nick at Art Storefronts. I want to watch what you're doing. Right? You've been added successfully. We are emailing you your discount code right now. Please check your junk junk spam just in case. There's also an option to show the discount code like right here. Um, you should do that. Just 
give them the code right on the spot. Um, but I like that you did that. We did water plus ink. Sandra, I thought we did Sandra. We did Jackie. Yeah, we did Sandra. Did that one. We did not do this one. I think. Yep, same advice here. Nothing new. I'm, I see this area. This probably not necessary. This is interesting to have this right here. Um, maybe you can get this other paragraph on the other side. I'm not sure to just move these things up so it's above the fold. I've got some questions we can get into when you're ready. Okay. Yeah, this is one, another one. This needs work. Shrink this, move this up. This should not even be here. This is not adding any value. And then move all this stuff up. It'll be dramatically better. Okay, let's go to the questions. Okay, the first one, uh, I've got June. I'm going to move over so people can see it. Uh, why are people coming to my site but not signing up for the newsletter? That's a good question. Uh, we can deal with that. And then Masek, I will deal with, uh, we'll get to your question next. But if people are coming to your site and they are not signing up for your newsletter, it usually means it's just improper traffic. It's bad traffic. They're not interested in what you're doing. They're not interested in what you're selling. Uh, they, however they got there, it's just, it's an indicator that the quality of traffic is not that high. Yeah, that's, it's either that or your lead capture tool is not set up according to best practices and you're giving away something that doesn't matter. Or, you know, like that's what concerned me about Bex. There's no incentive to join at all. Um, so it's, it's one of those two things. But if you're, what, the, the, the thing that I always say to everybody is, especially if you're starting out with us, just do everything according to best practices, please. Like if there's just one thing I could tell you, just please do that. It, just don't waste your time on anything else and just go right into the marketing and start driving, figuring out how to get leads and traffic because that's what's going to change your business for real. You can worry about any other stuff later. But as long as you're doing the lead capture according to best practices, if people aren't signing up, then you know that what Patrick said is true. You don't have quality traffic coming in. and and that traffic source is not good. You need to start working on other traffic sources. And it, to do that, uh, we have a, a document for Art Storefronts members that shows you all, it's an, it's an idea list for how to generate qualified leads or how to generate leads. Um, all sorts of different ideas that have worked for Art Storefronts members. Um, let's go ahead and make sure that's in the show notes. Uh, Taylor and Chris, uh, people will need that. Also, um, you should attend the live workshops for, for, for new members, um, and people who have not really sold any art yet. Uh, we're doing those, you know, once a month and they are live workshops where we're going to take your questions, you know, directly. So that way you can get over that hump. Okay. We've, we've also, I've got a question, um, uh, from Masic that I want to get into. And again, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but one thing too, just going back to the traffic thing is early on, you just work on getting traffic. You don't think too much about it. Then when some of it's flowing in, and especially from different sources, you've got some, you've got some traffic coming from Facebook, you've got some traffic coming from Instagram, you've got some coming in organic and some coming in direct, and you can look at all this in your stats manager. One of them usually will end up jumping out at you, and it'll end up having a much higher conversion rate to email contacts. And you're like, wait a minute, what did I do there? Obviously, those are the right kind of people. So we can we could do a great um, a great you know exercise or, or workshop on that. And we probably should. Um, yeah. Well, it, it, questions. Here's, here's one other thing that I want to, I'm, I'm going to share my screen again. All right. Because I just want to make this point, like, and it's why I, I, I was showing Kimberly's site. Um, actually I have it still open. I'm probably, yeah. So Kimberly, what, what she's done here is like, this is almost exactly what we provide by default, except obviously her logos and some of like the, the color choice on some of this. But, um, what we have provided you is what we have studied scientifically, what we have seen, you know, what Patrick and I are trying to advocate for you to have right from the start um, so that, because there's, there's a main purpose behind it. We know that marketing is the only differentiator that's gonna change your business. So if I had, you know, my preference for every one of you, you would just get a professional logo, 
throw it up there, nice and small, exactly where it should go. You know, upload your art, don't change very much, and get right into the marketing because I know that's what's gonna make the biggest difference for your business. I know that nobody, despite the fact that, you know, they, everybody has their own personal preference and it's your baby and you wanna just customize it as much as you want. I know that you're not scientifically looking at everything the way that we have with all of the years of experience and all the data that we have behind our storefronts. And so I just know that, you know, if, if, um, if you're making those types of changes and you're doing that, you're, you're probably making things worse and you don't even realize it. And so I just, I just hope and ho uh, that every one of you takes that to heart and you just, you know, you, you, it, especially if you're building your site, like if you just became a new member and you're trying to get your website live, like just get it live, just follow the best practices and get right into marketing. Any tinkering that you're going to do is not going to, it's not going to have the ROI. Maybe you can play that game like, you know, when you have 3,000 visits or 5,000 visits and you, you have some statistical significance so you can make changes and you can, you know, do a measurement of before and after. It's called an A-B test, like A slash B, like you test version A against version B. But if you're not doing an A-B test, I would probably follow what we've done because we've done the A-B tests, right? So um, I think that's a really good point. Um, a couple of things. One, um, Thomas is, is making mention that it would be better if the if the workshops were after hours because uh, that would be a little bit easier on people. Chris, will you get a poll in the group right now and just say, can and, and you guys, could you all go vote so that we get the feedback, like middle of the day workshop or after hours workshop uh, or closer to after hours? Uh, that's good feedback. I totally want to take that into account. We had one earlier that I want to deal with, and, and you talked about the – you know, if you have a certain amount of images or less, throw them all up as a grid on your site, right? But if you've got a lot more than that, you would just do a grid of your, your individual galleries, right? At some point in time, you have to include them in galleries. Yeah, so you should have them organized into subject matter categories, sub subject matter galleries, right? That's smart, right? So that's really good for like, if somebody's in the navigation and they just wanna find like a, a series real quick, they can go there. But your typical visitor is going to literally just land on your site, on your homepage, right? And it's like, all right, it's a free for all from there. So your job, your, the way you want to think about it is less text, less clicks, right? How can I get these people to see my art, to go through my gallery with the least amount of work as possible? And so if you don't have a ton of images, you are really doing yourself like a good service if you just put them all on the homepage. Try it yourself. I'm just like, what, what you can do, if you're an Art Storefronts member, um, go create a new product gallery page. Turn it offline so that only you can test it, okay? And then put everything on it. Put every single image that you have on it and then send yourself the link, like email it to yourself, the link to that page and do it on your phone and pretend that you're a visitor and just realize, like go, go through the experience of, of going through your current website and then try it with the way that I'm mentioning and just notice, like even count how many clicks that you had to do and how many, how many page loads you had to go through in order to see all of the different images on both and how long it took you. I think you'll be convinced that there's an easier way. Because like, think about it. If you get a thousand visitors this month, if you have a thousand visitors who saw every one of your pieces, right? Or 80% of them saw every one of your pieces versus like, 10% or 15%, think about how dramatic of a difference that will be for your numbers. Boy, I just saw in the chat that someone's like, I just found out that our state's going to be on lockdown. I got to go out and get supplies. I mean, we are living in a surreal time. Right? We are. Amazing. Um, okay. So I had, I, I got one question here. Did I lose it? Um, how can people use video as a sales tool on their art storefront site? Right now, do we advocate video? Boy, do we advocate video. Uh, but more importantly than using it on your website is how are you going to drive, use it and leverage it to drive traffic to your website. Uh, and one fantastic way to do that is Facebook Lives, Instagram Lives, or just video and any and all of your posts across the board. So that's just a quick answer on that one. Um, I've got an example that I can show uh, that I think is really tasteful. Mm -hmm. um, and it's uh, one of the projects that Meg Knappenberger, um, one of our... Uh, top artists on the platform is doing. So let me go ahead and do the screen share real quick. I'm just loading it up. Yeah, no problem. And, and it seems like the feedback on the, on the website teardowns are pretty tremendous. Um, it seems like this is something that people really, really like. I'm wondering if 
we want to we want to do something about that. We should take some notes. But leave a comment. I mean, if, if it gets yeah. to a situation like every single solitary person wants a website tear down, we could systematize that and make that a part of the product. Well, um, it, it, it it actually is. If you when you go live at Art Storefronts, our support team is going to give you a technical site audit. Okay, and um, some of the stuff might not be covered, like that I'm talking about right now. Um, like I, it is in certain areas, but I think a lot of people are making their own choices or maybe you didn't see it. That's okay. That's why we're doing this today, right? Like I've seen enough of the websites. I've been through this long enough and so has Patrick to know, like sometimes I look at uh, Art Storefront's member websites and I'm like, how did you get there? Like from what we started you with, how did you get there, right? And so we got to fix it. We got to talk about it. We got to fix it. So this is like a perfect example, right? Look how tasteful this logo is. Perfect size. You know, um, so like when you're loading every page and this person, you're forcing somebody to look at a lot of pages on your site, it's, you know, you're not wasting a lot of space and they're getting right into it. But back to the video, look, you got a YouTube video right here. I'm going to mute it really quickly so it doesn't blast all you guys with audio, I think. So, but Death Valley on the Saturday. you can see that it works, but yeah, this is a very tasteful way to have a video. So here's also an example of selling open edition, limited edition for $19.99 and an original painting for $75,000 right here on the spot. Now, if you're selling an original painting for $75,000, you you better have some, some, some really good uh, materials here, right? So let's take a look at what we got. We do have a video that's actually selling the piece. We've got all of the images of, look at this. So we've got the front, we've got the back, shows the signature and everything that's on here. We've got the certificate of authenticity. We've got, um, the actual hologram, right? We've got uh, a progress image of the piece on the easel. We've got the, you know, uh, the, the tools used to create it. We've got different angles of it. Um, you can see the texture, right? So you're, you're just, if you're looking at buying this, you're going, whoa, like you're really understanding the piece here. So if you're, in a, if you're a painter, you need to make sure that you are really showing an experience around this original painting so that people really get what they're going to buy. Okay. What most people do is they only have one image like this. That's what I usually see when I look at like a generic or a portfolio website. This is not the product you're selling, right? The product you're selling looks more like this and it has different angles and close ups and you got to get it, uh, have a concept for what the texture of it is. So if you want an art buyer like me to buy it, you've got to be able to do that. So you can see right here, somebody can try it right on their wall. They could try the original right on their wall. If they click this live room preview, that launches the augmented reality right on their phone, but instantly they can try, you know, this piece, uh, this original in their home. We've got some questions about how you put the YouTube video in there. Can you show that real quickly? Is that something easy to do? Uh, it's, it's, it's in our uh, support articles. Uh, we could get that in the show notes. So you basically upload the video to, your, to, to YouTube. You'll want to create a YouTube channel and then they, when you do that, there's a, um, there's a button that you click, you know, in YouTube on that video where you can copy the embed code and then you do that and you paste it right into the short description. And we've got an article walking you through that. It's really nice. It's nice to have. So if you can do that and you can show the piece, I recommend that you hold the piece in your hand. You show the different angles. You talk about it. This is your chance to sell the piece verbally. And especially okay. when you're charging a lot for an original, it's the expectation Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, look at, look, at, look at what we're doing to help somebody sell an original on here, right? Like, this, this is a big deal. You know, you've got the video. You've got all of the images. Like, if you want to sell originals, if you're wondering why originals, if you're not selling originals, it's because you're not... You don't have all of this stuff. The person doesn't know what they're buying. They're not connected to it at all. Um, so make sure that you're doing that. It's very, very important. Okay, what other questions do we have? Uh, I think we should open up to the Zoom group. Anyone want to raise a hand? Got a I, question? I think what else, like for in, in terms of website uh, audits and teardowns, um, if you guys want to for now or in the future as well, if you have a question about any specific area of the website, um, or any page on the website, make sure you mention that because I can hone in or we can hone in on, on, uh, whatever that might be. It might be a specific product that you've dialed in and you want to, you know, you want us to give our take on it.
I have a question here from Kim Boba. I don't have that many images on my site, just launched in February, slowly adding them. But are you saying that it's better to have more or less? No, you launch with what you have, you get live and you build it up as you go. Do not overthink it, do not stress about yeah, it. Yeah, you don't, you don't worry about how many you have because every piece that you have is essentially a marketing moment. So if you have two on your site and you are going to upload your third, that's a marketing moment. So you're gonna romance market that, you're gonna talk about it, you're gonna do Facebook, Instagram, follow our romance playbook on all of that and use that to collect leads because that's what's going to get you sales. That's all that matters. So you, otherwise you'll launch 20 images or 30 images while you wait. In the meanwhile, you haven't captured any emails or any leads, which means your business is going nowhere. Got another question here. What are your thoughts on offering 20% off versus free print giveaway for the funnel signup? Uh, I've had zero signups with the 20% offer. It does kick in at 10 seconds and not three. Uh, so I'm still wondering. Move it to three right away. Just do everything according to best practices and see if that changes. If that does not change, the problem is not the giveaway. The problem is the quality of your traffic. It's not good traffic. You, got, you need another traffic source. You got to go back to that list um, of new of ideas of how to generate leads, all the things that have worked and, um, and start working through that and, and find other people. This is a, it's one of the, like, this is one of those situations that many people will find themselves in. And you know, it, you don't love being in that position, but the thing that I love is that, you know, when you find out that you're in that position and you finally realize that the, that the traffic that's coming to your site is vanity traffic and they're not going to buy. That is a great moment because you can immediately move on. I see people go for years, years, just looking at traffic on their website and they're like, nobody's buying, nobody's buying. And then you look at it and, and they're, they're running the lead capture according to best practices and nobody's opting in. That's why we say it is so important to have that lead capture because it is, it is the only way that you can qualify traffic that's coming into your website immediately. Because as we all know, most people don't buy art like right on the spot. Like it's a, it, it takes a little bit, right? You got to romance it. You know, they might not have a need right away, but you as a business owner need a way to qualify whether that traffic is, is, um, is worthwhile. And the way to do that is by giving people an opportunity to save money to buy something from you, right? If, if I go to a website um, that you know, where I might potentially buy something like, and you're going to give me 20% off. I am taking that a hundred percent of the time. And so are you, I know all of you are right. Like you're not just going to give away free money, uh, like uh, just give it up. You're going to take it if you actually have the intention of ever buying. And so it's the best thing that you can do is to like, you've got something right on the spot where somebody's like, yeah, I'll take that. And it's like, okay, well, they clearly have a buying intention. So I'm really big on that. I'm not big on the giveaway. I know some people have had some success on that. Well, I'm sorry, let me correct that. I'm really big on the giveaway from a marketing standpoint in our art marketing calendar, really big on that. I'm not big on using a giveaway in the lead capture tool because all you're doing is hiding, you're, 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 you're not gonna, you're gonna get people who opt in because they wanna enter that giveaway rather than buying something from you. And that's why I think you gotta give them something that says like, wow, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, uh, I want that coupon. And let me just tell you guys, like it is a proven fact that people uh, get, fill out that lead capture tool. They get their coupon code by email and it's all automated, right? We have this whole thing automated for you. And within three days, like they have three days, like before it expires and they buy, like it happens all the time, right? It's only a percentage of people. So it might be, you know, uh, uh, a couple, like one out of a hundred or two out of a hundred, but this is what, when you're doing all of these things right, that's what boosts your conversion rate and that's what maximizes it. So that's what I would do. I would stick with the best practices. I would not go against it. What's next? I'm looking through some comments now. Um, I get a ton of tire kicker traffic. We all do, Thomas. That's just, that's just the nature of the game, sadly. The key thing with the, with the tire kicker traffic is just knowing that it's tire kicker traffic so that you can move on right? You got to know that your business is actually moving forward and you're not wasting your time. Do we want to go ahead and unmute uh, some of some of the members? Take some live questions? Yeah. So you guys can start raising your hands when you're ready. I'm going to deal with one more question here. Um, 
So Denver says, I don't understand the three-second rule for lead capture. How can someone decide that they want to be on my list if they haven't even time to see my art yet? Three seconds doesn't give them time to see anything. Ah, I love this question. Love this question. It is 100% true. That there is no question about that. That feels like an ambush. But sadly, it is the lesser of two evils because the analogy is you're in the bar. That guy or that gal of your dreams is about to walk out. You either go up there and ask for the phone number or they're gone and you're never going to see them again. And that is the principle that holds true for the lead capture. Is it absolutely optimal? No, I, I tend to agree with you. Like, why would I whack you in the face with something right before you came in? Like, hey, I just, I just got here. But the, the numbers just don't pencil. The numbers don't just, just don't pencil. And there's a reason that, that doggone near 100% of the e-commerce websites that you'll visit in the entire world whack you with one of those things the minute you get there because this is just a universal truth. So that's why that works. Yeah, <clears throat> I totally agree. I think also, like, here's what I would say. If you are have an emotional position about a three-second pop-up, then do it later if you want to, right? But what I would say in general is start with the best practices and then change after. That's always the best way to go, right? Like, otherwise, I can't tell you what your problem is if I start looking at, you know, your site or your situation or we can't because you've already changed so much that it's like, okay, well, which part is broken? The first thing that I say to anybody that's like, what is wrong with my site or, you know, my conversion rates or anything like that is, first of all, let's get everything back to best practices because I don't know what you've done here. I, 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 you, you've changed so much that you've, all the variables are different and you know, there's nothing that we can do with it. So I would start with the three seconds, see how that works for you for like a month. Um, and then, you know, at the beginning of the next month, if you want to move it to 10 seconds and then compare the percentage, you know, but you got to have enough traffic to have st statistical significance, but that's what I would do. Okay. Zoom room, you guys, anyone want to wave? Nice work getting in by the way, Todd. I always like watching that, like you leave a Facebook comment and then you go into the group and you get the link and then I see your face. It's so cool. Technology is amazing. 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 Um, who, who's waving? Anyone waving? You guys or you guys are just listening? Steve's ready to go. Okay, I'm going to unmute Steve. It's not letting me unmute him. He went to do it next. Oh, okay. Who, who is it? Steve. Steve? Steven Cruz? Can you hear me? We got you now. Okay. Hey, buddy. Um, what, just jumping on what we were talking about the last time, uh, you know, about I want to do uh, how I want to conduct giveaways. And um, I'm, I've am i been having problems using a chat box. I know how to use a chat box on a giveaway. But what if I wanted to do, like, uh, con conduct a survey, like, which is the best image, like present images? Which, what should I paint next? You know, that's why I want to use, I want to engage my, my, my viewers to, into my work. And one of the ways is to involve them in the process. Right. Is, am I on solid ground there? First of all? Yes. Yeah, you are. And that's what your social media sites are for. Yeah. Okay. So I want, you know, I want to use the chat box to, you know, collate stuff i know you can it, it'll send it to sheets and all that stuff um do you have a tutorial for how to conduct a survey on it or is there anything that you know that i that i would you know any resource that i could use first yeah. of all yeah so let me take this one so one you know and this is this is like a mantra motto of ours and it should be a mantra motto of everyone that's, that's involved in digital marketing it's like a the just ship it notion, right? Uh -huh. Don't overthink it. Uh, don't don't worry about it. Turn it on and see what happens first. And you know, you find so many times by doing this that you learn things that you were stressing about before that are absolutely matter not at all. So I would, if if, if you're real inclined to do chat, and I think you know, there's an argument that chat might hurt the conversion on your site, but there's also an argument that chat is a great way to go because it instantaneously opens a conversation with you and your potential buyer. I would go and get it. I would throw it on your site and don't do anything. Just answer the chats as they come in. What volume of chats are you getting? Are you getting a decent volume of chats? And I wouldn't, I wouldn't automatically funnel them to a survey. I would open up the conversation every single solitary time. And when you use Messenger as chat, one of the nice things about it is Messenger, in contrast to some of the other programs that are out there, is with Messenger, the chat never ends because it's in Facebook. You have their you, you have their details and the chat could continue because it's not some app on your website or some 
some chat feature on your website, some little program. It's Facebook Messenger. It's one of the most downloaded apps in the entire app store. It was in the top four most downloaded apps the last decade. So you can just throw it on. And, and if I'm you, this is what I'm going to do because you're early on, you're just getting going. It's hand to hand, hand, -to -hand, hand, -to -hand combat and absolutely everything. So throw it on. As soon as somebody gets in there, you know, it's an asynchronous conversation that's just started. So there's not an expectation. There's a little bit of an expectation to, to, to be there immediately. But you could just make your default reply in many chats say, if I'm not here, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Easy enough. And then on the couch, start hammering the conversation out on the phone and say, hey, mm -hmm. ask them manually. And if, if, if you get to a point that you can't handle the volume, number one, well done, have a beer, celebrate. Number two, now it's time to start automating. Okay, yeah, okay. So the idea is whether it's going to be worth automating on the front end, uh, right? And whether that's worth my time and uh right is that, it's not yeah i was gonna i was gonna say too, i was gonna say too that given what you're looking to do chris i just unmuted you don't we have a resource for um for uh like uh like asking asking your audience like what piece you should do next some things like that we have we have something like that. I'll double check and uh, Stephen, I'll get that to you. But I, I know we've come across it before. There's been at least a couple of people that have done it. So if we don't have like a formal resource, I can definitely put something together for you. Awesome. It's all yeah. We'll get that to you. I'm, you know, it's like hand to hand combat. I'm trying anything <laughs> to get engagement. And if I can get start a conversation with somebody, I can show them my work. That's my premise here. You know, I'm also looking at that idea that you uh, Nick that you had about just talking to influencers i have a, i'm compiling a list of influencers but you know i have can somebody please help me with some like like copy yeah in terms of how i would approach that of I, course I don't know. what do you I mean, mean like influence. like approaching like approaching these these uh influencers do we have that chris i, I thought that we wrote that up mm -hmm. I'll, I'll need to find where it is but we have we definitely have some copy um, yeah we just did that some, some copy for it yeah yeah because because i'm like I'm not good at like ask. I feel like very kind of naked asking somebody, "Hey, you got to <laughs> out twelve thousand people on your site?" Can I, you know? Yeah, there's a there's a tasteful way of doing it. We'll get that to you. I wrote I wrote exact copy, so he wrote yeah, it exact. Just, just use it's it. Two webinars, it's two webinars ago. And I'd rather have, have the geniuses write the copy. Oh come on, yeah. come on! <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, thank you. That's thank you, Stephen. That'll keep me busy for a while. Cool. Awesome. Okay, who's next? Do we have the raise hand thing going or or is it uh, just wave? I don't, see, and... I, don't, I don't see any raised hands. So if anyone's here, just wave and, and we can deal with you. Or we can, there might be some Facebook comments to go back and look at too. Beck, did you need to talk to us? Your call. Just drop a comment or whatever if you want to. Uh, Todd, you want to talk to us? You got any questions? Your call. All right, I did see I did see a comment here that um, Kevin York asked, "How are photographers doing versus painters when selling art online from your perspective or anyone else?" I don't. There's no. There's no difference. I mean, the thing like, I think you know, it, I, I do like this question because I think a lot of people. I, I'm very curious what, where this like mindset comes from, but you know, like eight to 10 years ago, I used to talk to people and they'd be like, oh, art doesn't sell online. Like it just doesn't sell online. So I'm just not even gonna bother. And I, and I sat there as the founder of Breathing Color, a, manu a company that manufactures canvas and paper, you know, uh, and sells to like, you know, thousands and thousands of, of art printing companies and individual photographers and artists and, and fine art print studios. Like, I, we were like, we were selling a ton of material to the companies that are printing for like art.com and all these other websites. So we saw how the volume was just going through the roof. Right. And so then I talked to somebody and they'd say, oh yeah, art doesn't sell online. And I'd go, oh my goodness, how do I even like, where do I even go with this conversation? Right. This is like 10 years ago, you guys. I mean, you have to realize that art.com had like 200, 100, 200 million in revenue. I think it was like 200 million in revenue in like 2010 or 2011. And then they kind of plateaued there for a little while. But, um, but yeah, so art sells online. The key thing is, is like, it's just, it's not that, this isn't like that complicated. It's like, 
you have your art gallery online, whether you're a photographer or a painter, right? And you run your business like a real business. You got to just do marketing directly. You get leads, like you drive traffic, you go out there, you just, you fill up your funnel. You know, you have, you provide a great customer experience, phenomenal customer experience, you know, get, uh, we talked about this last time, but get a hundred true fans, just get a hundred true fans that you're really connected with. You'll learn so much in there and then you'll build outward from there. It's really not any more complicated than that. So you can do extremely well as a photographer or a painter. It doesn't matter. It, 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 there's no difference. There's no difference. It's up to you. It's up to you and how you're going to grow your business. What's up, Avery, by the way? I saw you just joined on. Oh, you got a question, Avery? Hold on, we got to unmute you. Oh, Kimberly's got her hand up too. We'll go there next. Can you unmute? I don't know why. Yeah, I can do it. I've been following everything you guys are saying, and um, I finally got my platform to a place where I feel like getting a lot of traffic there, and it won't have a high, I lowered the bounce rate, because I was just following, like, why are people losing? So I made it simple as possible, but I just wanted to get you guys' feedback, honestly. You mean like a site teardown? Take a look at it. Yeah. Let's do it. Put the, put the URL in the chat box, or it, it, is, is it a simple URL? Everybody just tell us what the URL yeah, is. Yeah, it's uh, visionarycolor.com. Visionarycolor.com. Nick, you got it? Ah, uh, sure. Are you guys seeing this? Yeah, so Avery, uh, what is the name of the business? Is it Visionary Color? Did we lose them? It looks that way, yeah. We can't hear you, but let's just we'll just we'll just talk about this. So I'm curious he about he, got, he somehow got unmuted. I don't know. Oh da 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 da. I don't know. It maybe maybe it happened with the the share. So let's let's tear this down and then we'll talk to him, okay? Um, so logo, wondering about the logo, like it looks like this banner is taking the place of the logo. I would have visionary color here, maybe a be courageous somewhere over here. Um, and you got, you got two, you got the two, the, the, the two line navigation problem going on here. Get this into one line. Um, when there's, yeah, yeah, there's ways to, I think, aggregate some of these. So you're promoting, yeah, I got no, I got no real problem here because you're, you're, you're promoting some of your other products as well. Um, instantly when I land on this page, it's like, I've already, I know exactly what you got going. Um, so that's nice. Let's take a look. I, at. I like the, I like the product mix on this. I do too. Um, this, this is, this is really cool. I'm going right into this one. The one I like, um, I like the media types. Get rid of the cookies. Yeah. Yeah. The thing, the thing that I would say here too, Avery, is that like, this is called 265. Um, let me see if you've got, okay. Oh, okay. So, so, all right, this is great. So there's a, uh, a biblical reference here. Um, I would, I was, what I was just going to tell you before looking at this is I don't know what this piece is about. Like, Tell me, give me a little description of, of like to romance me a little bit about like why I should connect emotionally as a human being to this piece. So I think that right here, this is, this is, this is what you should put in your short description, right? Like right underneath this 265, I wanted to say, I, I wanted to immediately tell me how I can connect with it. So I would move that out and maybe even improve it a little bit if there's anything else you can say about that. And this is the type of stuff that might go in your full description because it's more like specification than it is, um, you know, like free standard shipping and taxes. It's more specification oriented. You don't have to move it because your description is so small anyway, you could easily put this in there. So that's the change that I would make. I love, I love how everybody's getting the media types all right. Um, sizes, all good. Let's look at this piece. This is a, this is a cool piece. I like it. 
Really cool. Really cool. Okay. Do we, do we have, do we have, by the way, an official position on the cookies scenario? Um, you know, the, the GDPR thing, you know, where I'm going to go. With <laughs> yeah. I want, I, I want you to go where you're going to go. What I will say is our official position is it would be irresponsible for us to advise people, you know, to not have the cookie um the for for the gdpr problem which is largely a european problem but why don't you go ahead because what you're about to say is both of our position on it go ahead this is not an official position it's the unofficial allowed, position this is the unofficial position that i hold personally in in my heart the european union can pound sand all they've done is put an annoying pop-up on everyone's site that everyone just closes, no one knows what it means, and no one cares. If you're not going to be selling Avery uh, to Europe a whole bunch, take that damn thing off. You don't need it. And you know what? If you get an order, if you get an order, and the European Union comes after you, I will pay the fine, okay? And let me respond to it. I hate those people. They've ruined the internet for no good reason <laughs> whatsoever. Don't worry about it. Yeah, and what I would say too is that for everybody, like the, the GDPR rule was not made for you guys or small businesses, they, it, it's for them to whack Google, all these big companies who are the big bad, you know, uh, big brothers that are collecting all of our data and, you know, selling it and all that stuff. That's what they're trying to stop. They're not trying to like slap you guys and, and, um, and all the small businesses and put a big burden on you. So, you know, like Kimberly, you sell a lot, like you got a top, like product, Italian product, like you keep that thing on there. You, you know what I mean? But for everybody else that's like, you're targeting like essentially the US market and you don't really sell much internationally and you haven't, you probably, you could, you could easily get away with turning that thing off. Um, that's our unofficial position. But Avery, Turn let us off. unmute you. Get rid of it. Um, Avery, did you have any follow-up questions? Wait, why is that not working? I'm trying to, un okay. oh, there we go. Yeah, there, there I go. Um, how do I actually do that? How do I turn that off? I thought that was just an option. That I oh, the which which part? part? The big the big banner thing? No, um, the big banner thing. I have it on there because it's just um, some for branding. The logo, I have it like that. I have the slogan "Be Courageous" just because um, every time I uploaded the logo, it was real huge and it created that big gap that you've been. Uh, Throughout this webinar. Well, so you, when you, when you upload, like you could try this if you want to, but when you upload the logo, even if it's big, if you use the theme editor, the button in the lower right hand corner, um, and then you click on the logo, there will be like a, an, a side, it's a, it'll probably say the width option, right? And then you can lower the percentage width on it and, and pick, you know, various different, you can see preview very, various different options. And then it, I guarantee you, you'll be able to get it into a nice size there. Um, is that, was that your only question or do you have anything else? We have, we probably, uh, the cookies, we have a, how do I take that option off my site? Oh, we you go, that, right? what's that? We've got to have a support article. We do. Right? Yeah. It, when you're in your site manager, you have pages. Yeah. You've got pages. You've got uh header and footer. It's in the header and footer and you'll see like GDPR. Once you click into that no, section okay, okay. and then you turn Chris, it off. Chris, Chris posted a screenshot. We're good. Oh, okay. Perfect. Yeah. Chris has got it in the chat here. Thank you. Of course. Cool site. Hey, we got, yeah. I'm excited to see what you're going to do. Just, just follow the market plan, get marketing. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you got you. it. Uh, okay. I'll go to gallery view. Nick, you got to do the mute on mute. Uh, I can tell Becca's got a question. Michael, what about you? We got Kimberly too. She's got her hand raised. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go to Kimberly. Hold on, Kimberly, we got to unmute you. Okay, Kimberly, you're on. <laughs> Thank you, you guys. I have a quick question. I have a page on my site called Reviews, and the reviews are maybe about a year and a half old. People were sending me reviews, uh, but for some reason, I've had customers since then. It's just not something that happens that often anymore that they they send me you know, uh, reply back saying, oh, this is awesome. So it, I was thinking about taking the page down or to get the other thought is, is there a good way to get more reviews if it's a good idea to have it, you know, and get some current reviews on there? 
I'm looking at it. Oh, is it gone? Oh, wait, sorry. I'm not on your site. Hang on. Pat, do you have any thoughts on that while I'm pulling this up? Yeah, I, I don't think it's a bad idea. And, you know, the one thing I would say about reviews is we are a reviews based culture. We are for sure. They can absolutely help uh, uh, shift a, 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 a sales buying decision. Um, some, some reviews, you know, we're all driven by the Amazon expectation, really, right? And, you know, you go on there and you read the reviews and you know there's some people on there they are going to trash the product no matter what it is. So you kind of ignore those and if it's got mostly good reviews, you buy it. Okay, great. So we all know that. On our, when you're talking about art or, or when you're talking about any product, reviews take forever to get. It takes a long, 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 long time. So I can see you've got the, the Facebook ones embedded here. I would, if I was an artist, knowing, knowing what I know now, knowing that Facebook's probably going to be dominant for you know, a good clip of time, I would probably just continue to, to, to get as many as I can on Facebook um, and then do exactly what you've done here, to be honest with you, just embed them. Because what happens here is you get an, an additional kind of social bump and cachet from having the Facebook logo. It's their real names and faces, often yeah. times an image. So I, I really like that. And then also, too, you know, every time that you get one, you can just extract the name, you can extract the text. I even go to the page and download an image just so I have it and throw them in a folder in case you need to use them in another format or if 10 years from now, Facebook is no longer the jam. So I would, I would encourage people to do Facebook just given, given, given the marketing landscape that we're in right now. But that's, that would be my two cents. Yeah. And Kimberly, my, my take is this is a non-issue, you know, like, uh, you, this reviews page is great. If I was a buyer and I came to your site and I didn't know you, you, you check the box. If I was, had any concern about your credibility, everything about your site is like screaming credibility to me, like all over because of just how tasteful it is. It's like, I'm in, a, I'm in Kimberly's gallery and I really feel that way. And I love that, you know, but I'm here and I scroll down and I see these and then I see the Facebook ones and it's just, there's enough here where it's like, okay, credibility box check done. So I, I like it. I think you're good to go. I wouldn't change anything. I just wouldn't even worry about it. Okay. Thank you so much for your yeah. advice. I, I really appreciate it. You okay. know, it's, it's good to know. I, I was a little bit stressing about that those reviews were getting all the <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no. Nobody even knows that. Nobody's looking at it. You are, but nobody else is. It's there. <laughs> it serves its purpose. And anybody else that's watching should try to have that. And that's just, you don't need to have them in your footer, like on every single page loading throughout the whole site. You know, you've got it right. You've got them right there. You had like a good 20 of them in there. And uh, that's all you want. You just want like that that person who is like, can I trust this person? You know, which it doesn't seem like that's a big issue on your site. Like it's pretty obvious that you know what you're doing, but for that person that might be looking at a, a bigger purchase, you know, and maybe they're in the, maybe they're in Europe or they're in the UK and they know they're, you're in the U S like seeing that is like, okay, like I could easily drop 1500 bucks or 2000 bucks and like not even be concerned at all. Right. So you've checked that box to non-issue. Thank you. Got, you got it. I've got two quick follow-up questions. One is, how do you put those Facebook reviews in her site? You can embed a Facebook post or you can take a screenshot of it. I actually pre prefer taking a screenshot of it uh, because then you're not getting uh, Facebook's baggage of um, code. But the interesting thing is if you embed them, which I believe is what Kimberly did hers, if you embed them, uh, there's a link back to Facebook. An argument can be made that's a good idea because then you know there's a, a added credibility. But I don't like that argument because all that is is a link off of my website. I don't want to leave my website. Yes. Same my website. So I would screenshot it. That's number one. Number two, Leslie asks, uh, any ideas on, you know, how to make happy customers uh, resistance to reviews? Love this question. All day. I've got you on this one. All day. You ship the product. You wait till the product arrives. You follow up. Hey, uh, Nick, did you, uh, did you get your product? It looks like the shipping should have arrived now. I just wanted to make sure you're completely happy with everything. Can you let me know? You wait till they respond. If they are warm, lukewarm, medium warm, definitely not cold, definitely not cold, definitely not in the middle, but anything even approaching happy, it would mean the world to me, Nick. If you could just leave me a Facebook review. I'm a small artist, a small business. It's how I grow. So if you're totally satisfied with how everything went, uh, could you just please leave a review? Here's the link. And that's it. Chris and Taylor, mark that spot. Let's get that uh, language typed up so everybody can use it. That was awesome. That's exactly how you do it. And, and by the way, um, 
Like this is just a perfect example that Pat's going through. Like you guys should be doing this anyway. You should be, you need to be very close with your customers. Anybody that buys from you, I think anybody that subscribes to your email list should get a reply. Um, and so that you can learn more about your customers and what they want. Um, like, you know, as we always say, like, look what we're doing right now. Look how close we are to you guys, right? Like it works. Okay. So it, it's, it's hand to hand combat too, you know, and, and the hand to hand combat sort of always works. Okay. So who's next? We got anybody else? Okay. Todd, gotcha, buddy. Wait till we unmute you. You are ready. Thanks. I put this in the chat, but um, I have both a commercial photography business as well as a fine art business. And so I, when I started with art storefronts, I, I made a simple landing page at my domain, toddpowell.com, to say you can look at it and see. Maybe you take a look and see, but I'd love to have your insight on that. It, it was a bit of a dilemma trying to have it all on a different platform for a long time selling prints, but your, 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 your site is so much more powerful on being able to sell prints so this is the thing and, and it's simple that's all it does is one clicks to one platform and one clicks clicks to the other how do you feel about that is that a good thing a bad thing rather than confusing people um so like one option choice you know it was like all i could come up with and there i am on my art storefronts yeah yeah i i don't mind it at all um the picture's been on there for a while but i'm going to change that here yeah <laughs> Just like another simple basic that's something that says it more than just the color on the photography. Fine art collection, assignment photography for me. Yeah, but what I would what I would say though is that okay, wait, when I click on this, what happens? Let's see. That should take you right to art store. Yeah, so you've got shop.todpowell.com. Yeah. So when you are driving traffic and you're doing marketing, what you need to do is just promote this URL. Okay. Don't promote your main page because you're just unnecessarily like making people yeah. go here. Like you might do that every once in a while. Like if you want to promote your whole business, but when you're doing like the romance marketing and the giveaways, like resist the urge to, um, to send them here because it's just kind of like, where am I? Like what's going on here? Right? Like I thought I was going to view art like that's, or his photography. You know what I mean? Um, just so you know, I mean, historically it's been, 50 50 of my business and, it, and I've been using the, I've had the dot, the Todd .com for decades, for a couple of decades. So it's like, that's on everything that I have. And, and a lot of these cross over too. I mean, I've gotten commercial work from fine art clients. And I've gotten fine art work from commercial clients. So it's, it, it's a bit of a quandary, but I just thought of it as we were talking through all the rest of this. There's yeah. a quandary for me. A couple of things. One, who is the EU and how did they get cookies on American websites? Let's get rid of that. Number two, <laughs> I would I say. For seeing that before. That's okay. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I'm, I'm so upset about it. The <laughs> amount of money that was lost for that, those idiots. This is America. Anyway, I'm going. Um, <laughs> you're the brand. You're the brand now, right? And it is, it is, you know, especially in, in, in the world that we live in now, it is, it is all about like the personal connection and the personal bond that you have with your customers, whether they're, they're fine art print buyers or whether they're your commercial clients. And so I would get rid of, the little landing page that you have, I would throw a commercial link in my header here and I would drive everybody to this because it, it's, it, it just, the commercial guys will know how to find it, they'll know what to do. Every single solitary one of them will find out that, oh my gosh, he actually all does fine art prints too, these are amazing. And they'll probably just bookmark it in the back of their minds and maybe they'll come back when it's time to buy. You can kind of slowly start start putting in uh, things in your footer of your of your official business and say, hey, you know, I'm here to, I'm, I'm here to promote this. Yeah, and so, good. So this is a commercial. I would just, yeah. I would, I would, I would link from the other one to this one because the majority of the work that you get commercially, my guess, I mean, you tell me if you're wrong, if this is wrong, is recommendations, people that know you, people that have always known you, or, and, and this is an important one, or do you feel like people are randomly searching around for a commercial photographer on Google and finding you that way? Well, it is that too, Patrick. Be oh, just, it is, it is definitely that because I'm in a specific region. And mm -hmm. over the years, it used to be from like sending a photographer on a plane to go somewhere to finding someone who's, who is, um, you know, capable of doing what you need to do. And typically when people see that other site and they're looking for me, I'm in there on the bidding process because I have, I've been doing it so long and I have. I mean, you just clicked on one thing that I don't really do much anymore, which is the uh, ski stuff. But 
you know, it's like I've had huge jobs come that way. And again, that's dwindled some. And part of me is also like wanting to sunset that part of my career. But with all these economic changes that are coming at us now, I might be just like back to taking anything. I've been really focusing on the fine art for the last, you know, couple of years with a couple of really solid clients. And again, a big job comes, it's got enough zeros behind it. I'm all for it. I'll, I'll drop everything to help somebody, but that's money up front, you know. So it's it's a real, but I actually kind of agree with that. I absolutely, what you said, Patrick, was right on track because I, I've thought about lately just doing what you said, put making the landing be toppal.com, not shop.toppal.com, but just toppal.com goes right to our, our storefronts and having. The problem, you know, the problem the, is that I would say that where I, where I would retract things a little bit is, oh, and it's a photo shelter site. I see. Yeah. How, do, do they let you here's here's the right answer okay here if, you know if you if you came into my office and you said like hey you're an expert i need you to advise me on what the best move is i would need to look at the stats and i would need to look at google analytics and understand what kind of traffic is coming the danger is google really really likes really old websites they love <laughs> really, really old websites and not not in the sense from the technology standpoint but from the sense of this has been a website that's been the domain for a the domain yeah, age. it's been around for a long time it hasn't gone anywhere. It hasn't changed. I trust it. And so you might be ranking in a good place as a result of that. So to go and switch it up, to go and switch it up, I, I, I would actually probably be reluctant. Um, I mean, it all changed for me when I when you said you are continuing to get gigs. If you're continuing to get gigs, I probably wouldn't touch it. I, probably, I just probably wouldn't. Yeah, I don't see. I, so let me ask you this too. If you look on the photo shelter site underneath contact, it says shop for prints. Yeah. And that, takes, that takes you right back to the art store prints. Right. Say. Yeah, so, so you're. I mean, there's actually a, even a third one, and maybe since this just came up to mind, but while we're talking about it, I do I do a fair amount of work with our consultants, both in hospitality and and um, healthcare. So I kind of even almost want to have a third button for them on that landing page. It's like because I don't really feel like the art storefronts page reflects to what I do with those people, which those are also really big, huge, grand jobs. You know. Yeah. I almost like to have one. Oh, are you an art consultant? Are you an interior designer? click here and go to a whole different world where it's a different world. You know, I've got, I got down what you're doing, but there, I've, I've had trouble. And again, my, also my art storefronts thing doesn't have quite the imagery and the populations for a number of reasons. Cause I've been busy with other jobs as I want it to be at this point. Whereas the, the, the photo shelter does, I mean, you could actually find so much more of my, the same work, but in different categories on photo shelter. And it's, they, they both have strengths and weaknesses, you know, I have no problem with the way that you're doing this. I, I, I think it's, I think it's kind of like a, it's not really an issue. I think you leave the photo shelter site, you're cross promoting. Are you still there? Yeah. Oh, okay. You're cross promoting, um, you know, the, the, the print store on your commercial site on the, on the print store, you should cross promote the commercial, you know, if you want to, um, on that. And then, uh, and, and then, yeah, and then and this is basically what I'm looking at right now is basically a portal page for your business. That's all it is, you know? So it's no big deal. Like, just do that. But all, all my point is like, you, you secure it, secure it though. He's got to get an SSL on this thing. So yeah, it's not secure. That's yeah. And then the only thing that I, I mean, something that I might consider doing, you know, is instead of shop dot um, yeah. I think you need a better logo here too, by the way. You yeah, should. It's old and outdated, and I clunked around with that. But when I like given, started, it's kind of what I had. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Fiverr, Fiverr.com. Like, Fiverr. go there, go there, do it. Like, you'll have one by Tuesday. You know. So it's spelled out Fiverr. I heard you talk about it before. Yeah. F F I V E R R dot com. Okay. Yeah, and that's high on my list. And I mean, I work with designers all the time. It's just another thing on the to do list. Yeah, it's really easy. You know, you go on there. My, my, like the way that I usually do it is you, you look for a designer that has a logo that looks like one you would want. And then you hire that person and say, this is how I want it to look essentially with these changes and you can get it done really quickly. Cool. Um, but, but yeah, the only other thing is like, you may want to consider, I mean, this is obviously a strategic thing, but you may want to have like Todd Powell art. What do you say? Or photography? Talk yeah, out. I, I'm actually moving into I'm moving into a bunch of none of it's here, but I'm moving into mixed media pieces and okay. I mean, if, this, if this stuff didn't pay my bills, I would only be doing that. But I get a lot of demand for selling prints. You know? Yeah, I don't, I, and I don't mean to. Um, I I don't. I, I'm not necessarily saying like you know 
art or photography wording is better. What I'm actually meaning is you're yeah. doing this on a subdomain right now. You've got shop totally. dot, you know, and I think that when you're promoting your art, like for the next 10 years, right. And you're promoting this business that like when you're doing that on social media and all that stuff, I think it deserves its own domain name. Um, and okay. it'll, it'll, it'll seem more appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I just want to say too, I mean, I've been, because I've been pretty much, quarant not quarantined, but we're pretty well locked yeah. in where I live, uh, most ahead of other people, which is kind of interesting, but I've been following each and every one of these, whether I see it live or not, and this is like, you guys are killing it with this. This has like got me so fired up to do this anyway, and I hope that everyone watching and listening knows that you know, this is no easy step to do what what is going on here. It takes a lot of time, a lot of commitment, and believe what Nick and Patrick are saying here. This stuff is the real deal, but it takes so much more work than you can ever, ever, ever imagine. It's that's the truth right there, right? It's thank like you, thank you guys so much for this. Oh, thank you. That was like that was really touching, and I we both can't tell you how much we appreciate yeah. it for sure. Like I, I, I really, really appreciate that. Like I can, I, I'll just tell you because I've said this before, but, but myself, um, you know, I've started six companies. I've been an entrepreneur since I was 18, right? And I'm 40. So, uh, like it's been a long road. I've gone through everything you guys are going through, you know? And, um, and like, I, I know how hard it was for me to hack my way through all of these different companies. And I had failures in there, like total failures, you know, even after like I had a sick, uh, uh, after I started breathing color, which is 20 years in business now, um, or it's 18, but, um, but, uh, I had failures after that. So I thought I was like invincible. I was like, wow, I've got this huge company. Like this has been amazing. And then the, my next one was just a total flop, you know? And so it's just incredible how this stuff works. But the whole time throughout my whole experience, I was always like, you know, you know, I, I need, I need help. Like I need mentors. Like it doesn't matter. And I always say this, it's like, I don't, it doesn't matter what level you're at when you're just starting out, you need help. When you get to like 50,000 in sales, you need help. When you get to a hundred, when you get to a million, when you get to 10 million, you need help. It never stops, you know? And so Being an entrepreneur I, can be a lonely road. Yes, it can. And, and and like the, the, like this product that we're trying to create for you guys, it's almost hard for me to articulate because it's in, it's in our hearts and it's like, I know it's what everybody needs. It's the most valuable piece because, um, because to be able to get the advice that you need preemptively to make sure that strategically you're thinking about the business the right way and you're not going down the wrong path is just so huge. It's the biggest thing, you know? And so, um, so I'm extremely passionate about it. We're, we're all extremely passionate about it. And, uh, you know, trying to figure out every way to make this, this coaching product, this consulting product better, you know? So well, I, I would say, I would say to you, Nick, you know, after watching the first webinar last week, it was probably your second one or whatever. I don't know if it was Thursday or whatever, what came through the most clearly to me and I'm 58 and I've been a photographer since I was like 22. Right. So I'd like you, it's like, dude, I've made every mistake. I've done every boneheaded thing, everything. I'm, yet I'm yeah. miraculously still here. But what really came through so clearly in the first thing was, was your passion and your real commitment, not to just making money, but to, to having this business, but to empowering us. And I had no idea that you were breathing color. I know who, I know what that's all about. I was like, really? And then you talked about all the other things that you started. And I think that's really makes it very genuine for the other people who are just listening in or even contemplating joining this platform. I mean, you can't count on Patrick and Nick to, to make it happen for you. You have to absolutely do it. But what these guys are offering here is unprecedented in anything as well as their customer support and tech support. Unprecedented in anything I've ever dealt with. And, you know, I started with film and, I, and a typewriter. So thanks, you guys. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate it. <laughs> you can unmute, you can unmute me now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think like, I, like it, it's worth, it's worth just saying that, you know, there's a reason why we don't just sell websites, why we just don't do it. Like, because it's a complete waste of time in, in our opinion, because, you know, just because you start a website or that it's easy to start a website doesn't mean you have a business. 
And, um, you know, we have this in some of our material. I'm going to share my screen and just show you guys. But it's like, like there's something like 99% of all Shopify stores fail. Um, yeah, like you can see these things, right? Why 99% of Shopify stores fail. And it's like, there's, it's the biggest ruse out there. And I'm not calling out Shopify because there's all these website platforms, but they just start looking at their advertising, like, and what they promote. And it's just, you know, they just want it to make it really easy for everybody to start a website and think they have a business. But the truth of the matter is you have to like, you got to do marketing and you have to grow a business. Like you don't just have a website. So we built this, we built art storefronts at, with, you know, the tools and, uh, and the, the marketing and the, and the business coaching so that like, we're, we're focused on success and that's it. And we don't let a ton of people in, like we limit the amount so that we can give this quality of a service, but that's just the way that we're going. And what's, you, you'll see this if you look around, but people say it all the time. They're like, why aren't you guys like fine art America? And you know, you have this big website or, or they're like, why don't you just like let everybody sign up for, you know, and just, and just, uh, for a monthly fee on the website or whatever. And, and it's like, we're, because we're not trying to be like everybody else, you know, like we're trying to make people actually successful. If the whole industry was successful, then this wouldn't matter. You know, like we wouldn't need this product. And, but even what's, what's, what we've even discovered is that even with our small wins Facebook group and all the material that we have, we decided that we needed to take it one step further and do this because we didn't feel like that was enough. And there's so many people that are probably listening to this, Art Storefronts members that are nodding their head going, yeah, I've been in that group. And, you know, like, like, yeah, like it, it, it helped me in some ways, but it wasn't enough and it's not enough. It's just not enough. We've got to talk. We've got to talk through your specific problems or what's, what you're thinking and to help you focus on the right things and have the right priorities. So, so thank you, Todd. Appreciate that. All right, who else we got? Anybody else want to hop on? We have any other questions? Pat, do we have any other comments or questions on there? Are you still uh, are you dealing with no, family stuff? My children there? running okay. around my backyard right now like wild animals. <laughs> this 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 shelter in place is uh, is, is reaching peak. Yeah, right my now. wife is clearly doing a great job with my girls, so I haven't heard a peep. I don't know how that's possible, but it is. Um, okay. I, I think we I think we 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 cut it there. Okay. Guys, All right, thank guys. You so much. Yeah, drop a comment and let us know how you liked it. Uh, um, if you got some value out of this and any other uh, topics of focus that you want next in the future. But love you guys. Stay safe, and we'll see you on Tuesday. Tuesday is our next one at the same time two two thirty p.m. Central, three thirty Eastern, twelve thirty Pacific. Cool. See you guys. Have a good weekend.